Welcome to Scientific Notation, the second video in our Chapter 2 unit on data analysis. Scientific notation is used to easily write very large or very small numbers. For example, we have in chemistry this thing called the mole. Mole is 602 followed by 21 zeros, particles. And we'll come back to this in Chapter 11, which is coming up next. It's very hard to write those zeros out all the time and make sure you've got them correct. So instead, we allow you to condense this in a way. Rather than writing those 21 zeros out, we're going to put a decimal point after the 6 here. And then we're going to use those zeros as a magnitude and write them as times 10 to the 23rd. You'll see why it's 23 and not 21 in a few minutes. On the very small side, the mass of an electron is this many kilograms, it's 30 zeros, 30 zeros all the way here to the 9, 109 kilograms, so put a decimal point after the 9, and we get 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. In general, scientific notation consists of two parts. The first part, A, is the coefficient. It's the number that comes before the time sign. It must be between 1, it can be equal to 1, and less than 10, and it can be negative. This requirement of negative between, sorry, between uh, 1 and 10 is in order to have only one non-zero digit. That's why I put the decimal point after the 9 and after the 6 up here. One non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. The exponent is this n. It's the power of 10, and it's the magnitude of the absolute value of the original number. It's positive if we have a number that's greater than 1 or large, and it's negative if we have a number that's less than 1 or small. All right, so with that, let's take a look at how to convert from decimal notation to scientific notation. Large numbers, as I said, will have positive exponents. So if your number is greater than 1, this is what you're going to do. Take the decimal point, or the implied decimal point, and move it n spaces to the left. This n is then going to become your, your exponent. You decreased the coefficient, the number, by n powers of 10, so the exponent is going to increase by n powers of 10. We're going to add n, and so it becomes positive. For example, if we take 56,100 kilograms, our implied decimal point is after the last zero. We move to the left. One, two, three, four decimal places. So there's just one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. We move four spaces to the left. That means that in scientific notation, n is going to equal four, and the coefficient is going to be 5.61. 5.61 times 10 to the fourth kilogram. Notice that the units come after the number, so the entire number is written first, including the exponent, and then we put our units. Negative numbers are going to have negative coefficients. Suppose we had some place where we had lost 56,100 kilograms, we'd have a negative number here, and we'd have a negative out in front here. So having a negative number, the coefficient stays negative as well. All right, we can also convert numbers that look like scientific notation but aren't um, into scientific notation. Generally, these are going to be large numbers, so we're going to move the decimal point to the left to, to decrease the coefficient and increase the, the exponent by the number of decimal points we move to the left, m. So if we take a look at this number, imply decimal point after the 9, you notice this number it does not have one digit to the left of the decimal point, so we're going to move one two spots to the left to get that one digit to the left of the decimal point. Because we move two spots to the left, we're going to increase the coefficient by 2. So n is going to increase by 2, and we're going to end up with 2.89 times 10 to the sixth meters. Again, notice the units come after the number. All right, so far so good. How about small numbers? If you have a small number, you're going to end up with a negative exponent. So a small number, less than 1. You're going to take the decimal point. There is going to be a decimal point now. And you're going to move it n spaces to the right. So the coefficient only has one digit to the left of it. Because you've increased the coefficient, the exponent is going to decrease 
by the same number of orders of magnitude, and that's going to be increasing or decreasing by n because exponents, you subtract them when you decrease them. It's going to be a negative n now. So let's take a look at an example. If we have 0 0.0000321 seconds, we want to move this decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six spots to the right. I'm sorry, five spots to the right. And n then is going to equal negative five. Again, negative because it's a small number. We've got to remember that. In scientific notation, then we're going to have 3.21 times 10 to the minus fifth seconds. There's our divider between the number and the unit. All right, you think you're ready? I think so. It's your turn. Let's take the following numbers and convert them into scientific notation. What I'm going to do is pause the video now and you go ahead and work these out on your paper and start up the video again when you're done. All right, so you have worked out the numbers and hopefully you've come up with the same answers here. Here we have a large number. We have to move the decimal point seven digits to the left. So we have 7.51 times 10 to the 7th centimeters. Here we have a small number, so we'll have a negative exponent. We're going to move this to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal points. 10 to the minus 6 grams, 2.31. Move this to the left because it's a large number. You have a positive exponent. Don't get confused. It's still going to be a negative number. Negative 2.349. We move 5 spots to the left. 10 to the 5th seconds. 0.95, we're moving one to the right, so we have 9.5 times 10 to the minus one kilometers. We're gonna move three to the left, 10 to the third, 9.26 is our coefficient. And again, keep that negative number. We have to move three, four, five to the right, so negative 3.549 times 10 to the minus fifth kilograms. All right, so that's converting from decimal notation to scientific notation. How do you convert from scientific notation to decimal notation? Again, you've got to remember, you've got to get this association in your, in your head. Positive exponents are large numbers, greater than one. So positive is, positive is big, positive is good. We're going to move the decimal point from in the scientific notation, we're going to move the decimal point to the right because we want to make the coefficient larger and we're going to move it n, that number, uh, exponent number of decimal places to the right. If you need to, you may need to pad the decimal location with zeros, and we'll show you how that works in a moment. So, 9.83 times 10 to the sixth grams. Here's our decimal point, here's n. We want to take this number and we want to move it one, two, three, four, five, six spots to the right. Six spots to the right gives us a large number, but we've got one, two, three, four spots that had no digit above them. We've got to pad that with zeros to make it look right. And we get 9,830,000 grams. With negative numbers, it works the same way. Negative exponent, except we go the opposite direction. Negative exponents are small. Negative is, negative is small. Negative is, I guess you can think of it as bad. Move the decimal point to the left now because we're gonna take the coefficient, which is between one and 10, and we wanna make the coefficient smaller, and we're gonna move it by that same number n, number of spots as we had the exponent. And you most likely, you will have to fill back with zeros to the new decimal point. So we take 5.727 times 10 to the minus four meters. There's n equals negative four, so move it one, two, three, four. There's our new decimal point fill it in with three zeros, and we get our new number, 0 0.0005727 meters. Now, with negative exponents, I want you to notice that the number of zeros is always going to be one less than n. So we had n equals negative four, we have three zeros here. And that's just the way it works out. You can figure that out why, or you can talk to me in class and we'll help you to figure out why that works. All right, so it's your turn. Let's convert the following numbers into decimal notation. Pause the video, and then we'll come back and take a look at how you did. All right, and we're back. So 
Let's take a look at the answers and see how we did. 10 to the seventh, we're going to take this decimal point and move it to the set to the right seven spots. It means we're going to end up needing to pad five zeros on the end to get 53,000, 53,900,000 centimeters. Here we have a negative exponent, so we are going to have a small number. We're going to take that decimal point and move it to the left, seven decimal points, seven spots, and we'll fill in with six zeros, point zero 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 five three nine nanoseconds. We have a large expo a positive exponent, so it's a large number. We're going to move to the right three spots. We're going to have to pad with one to get 1,120 milliseconds. We're going to move to the left now because we have a negative exponent. Move to the left three spots. We're going to have to fill in those two zeros there, 0 0.00112 milliliters. We have a negative number. Make sure that negative comes through in your answer. 10 to the fifth, so it's a positive exponent, a big number. Move to the right. Uh, five decimal spots because the three and the five take up the first two we're going to have to pad three zeros and negative 235,000 grams again a negative number 2.35 times 10 times 10 to the minus five meters and negative exponent a small number so we're going to move this to the left and pad it with four zeros point zero 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 two three five negative meters all right the last section I want to cover is how to approach scientific notation on your calculator. On your calculator, we're going to use the special EE key, which you can see is the second comma button. It's our scientific notation button. It's the way we're going to enter exponents on our calculator. We're going to do this instead of using the times 10 to the power. We're not going to do that. We're going to enter 1 EE2. So here's how the keystrokes would look. You'd enter 1, press 1, second, comma, gives you EE2. And in your display, you'll see something that looks like this, 1 E2. You only press the EE key once. A single E is going to show up in your display. That's what you want to see. The EE replaces the entire times 10 to the power, times 10 to the caret. Replaces that entire thing in there. So replace the entire thing with EE. Do not enter any part of it, otherwise you will probably have an incorrect calculation. What this is doing is helping us to avoid operation order of operation errors where your calculator, if it looks at 1 times 10 power 2, it sees the 1 as one number and the 10 power 2 as a second number. We want to make this all one number. And seeing this as 1 E2, we'll show your calculator that it's all one number. You could use parentheses around the 1 times 10 of this power 2, but the EE key is better, it's quicker, and in the end, it's more efficient. Now, you don't always have to have your calculator in scientific notation mode, but if you want to enter into scientific notation mode, how, here's how you do it. First thing you're going to do is you're going to press the mode key. When you press the mode key, this is what the display in your calculator looks like. So what you want to do is then use the arrow key here to highlight SCI and press enter, and that's going to then give you scientific notation mode last thing you want to do is you want to press second mode which is quit Se second mode and that's going to quit out of your mode screen to return to decimal mode you're going to hit mode again like you did before when you do it now this SCI will be highlighted so you're going to click the left arrow to get back to normal and hit enter Again, press second mode to quit out of this screen. And you're out of scientific notation mode. Calculations on a, uh, using scientific notation mode, you have to be really sure that you're entering things correctly. Use the EE key. I want you to use the EE key for all of the following calculations. The key you have to watch out for, the trick is, if you have two or more numbers in a denominator, then the entire denominator gets put into one set of parentheses to make sure that calculation gets done first. You're going to use the 
the negative sign key, not the minus key, don't use the mathematical function minus, but use the negative sign key to change the exponent to a negative exponent. Here are the equations I want you to practice using calculator for. Again, we'll pause the video and then we'll come back and see how you did. All right, so you're back. Here are the answers. In our first calculation, we had 6.73 e negative 5 is how you'd see that in your calculator. Um, that uh, multiplied by 2.91 e2 is going to give you either 1.95843 times 10 to the minus 2 if your calculator is in scientific notation mode or otherwise it's going to give you 0 0.0195843. Notice that your calculator didn't have times 10 to this power. Your calculator had e. I want you, when you're writing and when you're explaining your answers, I want you to take that E and put it back into this kind of mode that's more speaking and writing mode. All right? In this next problem, 6.4 E6 divided by 8.9 E2 should give you these answers. If you got 10 to the fifth or 719,100, then you did not enter this in scientific notation mode. If you enter times 10 squared, the calculator is going to do that after it divides by 8.9, and everything is going to be, I'm sorry, not 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 7th, or 7,191,000. You'll be way too high. Finally, in this last calculation, I want you to make sure that you put the, the, the entire denominator in parentheses, and that way you'll get the calculation correct. Any questions, please see me in class. We will be practicing these calculations and what we learned in our units worksheet on, on um, density and other calculations in class in our next class. So I'll see you then.